Welcome to worship for the fifth Sunday of Easter, May 2nd, 2021. If the weather holds and is nice, Village will begin its park service, that is, worshiping outside on uh, at Paramarquette Park in Milwaukee at 10 a.m. on Sunday. This video will reflect some of the changes of that worship, um, which we invite anyone to attend. We do offer these words as an introduction for worship this week. These were written by Reverend Vicki Watkins. Love calls us away from drawing borders and building walls. Love calls us to erase lines and building bridges that separate us. Loving one another calls us to see the burdens we have placed on others that excludes them. The burdens of racism, sexism, ableism, ageism, and the burdens of homophobia. Perfect love casts out fear. And the love we know of God calls us to grow beyond what we have known ourselves to be. When we grow, we bear fruit. When we include others, we extend the love of God beyond what we have experienced. For God is love, and we cannot love God unless we grow and expand our love for one another. Welcome to worship. A call to worship taken from 1 John. Beloved, let us love one another. Because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and God's love is perfected in us. Come, worship God, who is love. And follow Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess. Loving God, we confess that we have not loved as we ought. We have used love as if it was to be hoarded, rather than shared freely. We have set limits on something that ought not to have borders. We have guarded how we love others instead of sharing your grace. 
Forgive us for not loving as you have first loved us without condition. Forgive us for determining who is and who is not worthy of love when you are love. Forgive us for not following the, the example of our Savior, who became last of all and servant of all, who laid down his life for us all in the name of love. Call us into your way that by caring for the most vulnerable, we care for all. By loving those who are different than us, we love ourselves best. By sharing in this love, we reflect your image in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, who came to us in the name of love, we make this confession. Amen. Hear these words of blessing and assurance. The steadfast love of God endures forever. There is no limit to God's grace. You are God's beloved. You are forgiven and restored. Love one another deeply as God has loved you. And you will know the peace of Christ in your hearts. Amen. Let us pray. Author of life, you have written love into the beginning of our stories. You have written love into the blood that flows in our veins into our very DNA, for we are made in your image, and you are love. We have strayed from the story you intended for us, so help us find our way back. Open our hearts to love more deeply. Open our minds to seek your wisdom and to grow beyond what we know. Open our lives to recognize that your beloved community is beyond the people of our family unit, beyond our friends and neighbors and churches, but to the whole world. Help us to live in ways that sustain and nourish this planet and all your children and remind us that you are the author of our lives in whom we find our beginning and ending. Amen. First reading Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he goes not upon his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? 
Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he is passing through the region, he proclaimed to the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because love comes from God. And everyone who loves has received the new life from God and knows God. The person who does not love has not learned to know God, for God is love. The love of God was revealed to us by his sending his only son into the world so that we might find life through him. His love is seen in this, not in our having loved God, but in his loving us and sending his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us in this way, we surely ought to love one another. No human eyes have ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in union with us and his love attains its perfection in us. We know that we remain in union with him and he with us by this, by his having given us some measure of his spirit. Moreover, our eyes have seen, and we are testifying to the fact, that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus Christ is the Son of God God remains in union with him and he with God. And moreover, we have learned to know and have accepted as a fact the love which God has for us. God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. It is through this that love has attained its perfection in us, so that we may have confidence on the day of judgment, because what Christ is, that we also are in this world. There is no fear in love, but love, when perfect, drives out fear, because fear implies punishment, and the person who feels fear has not attained to perfect love. We love because God first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and yet hates a brother or a sister, he is a liar. For those whom do not love their brother or sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. Indeed, we have this commandment from God. Those who love God must also love each other. The Gospel from John, chapter 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Abba is the vine grower who cuts off every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, but prunes the fruitful ones to increase their yield. You've been pruned already, thanks to the word that I have spoken to you. Live on in me as I do in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself apart from the vine, neither can you bear fruit apart from me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who live in me and I in them will bear abundant fruit. Far apart from me, you can do nothing. Those who don't live in me are like withered, rejected branches to be picked up and thrown on the fire and burned. 
if you live on in me and my words live on in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Abba will be glorified if you bear much fruit and thus prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. The pandemic shutdowns closed the church. Racial justice is not the work of the church. Inclusivity is only political correctness. Congregations like ours, village, are just aberrations following some liberal agenda and not the gospel. There are voices who would say that we and others like us are just out on a limb, meaning we have no basis, no grounding, no support. I don't think that's the case at all. But I actually would say that yes, we are, we are quite out on a limb. The text we hear today from our sacred scriptures tell us that we are indeed on a limb. In truth, we are a limb. We are a, a limb, a branch of a living vine that stretches and grows beyond whatever would fence it in and contain it. We are out on a limb of a living faith that continues to wrap its arms around those excluded like the Spirit of God that dropped Philip in the path of the Ethiopian eunuch. While the ancient world didn't share the racism of this country, this story reminds us, tells us, insists that our church is one that includes people of all ethnicities and nationalities. The church is not white, Jesus was not white. The leaders of the early church were not white. Tradition, especially of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, teaches that this man, this eunuch, was responsible for sharing the gospel, for birthing the church in that part of Africa. So we can say that this eunuch is a father or a parent in the early church. But the truth is it is going out on a limb because there is a long ancient tradition of the spirit winding its inclusive reach throughout scripture and history. The importance of seeing within our holy writings the inclusion of someone who others might see as damaged or unworthy outside of God or the church or leadership of the church because of his sexuality is not lost on members of the LGBTQIA plus community. And remember, there is truth in that phrase, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Therefore, this is an important text supporting God's expectation of inc inclusivity. Welcoming and working for justice is not new. It's not a modern invention of the church. It is not something that we are just doing on our own, somehow apart from God's desire. Even and especially in this pandemic, we have not been closed, as you cannot close the church. Buildings may be shuttered, locked, and sold, but the church is God's people, and most importantly, God's people in the world. 
When we are active in sharing and showing and practicing God's love, it doesn't matter where we are. The energy, the grace, the beautiful truth of a loving God flows through us like branches of a vine and vines spreading with God's spirit, pushing us into the world. And today reminding us that it is important, so very important to welcome especially and support LGBT plus folk, including especially our trans siblings during these days and expanding our understanding to go beyond the binary, doing the work to reshape our language to pay attention to chosen pronouns, using the language of siblings and not just brothers and sisters. Some would say, we're out on a limb there. I say, we are where God's spirit puts us exactly on a limb. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. The response is, hear our prayer when you hear the words, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray to our victorious Savior on behalf of the church, the world, and all people. Lord Jesus, thank you for cutting us from our tree of sin and death and grafting us to you, the living vine. Give us courage. Your Father's pruning shears frighten us at times. Give us faith. He prunes us to bear much fruit in you. Give us love. It is the sweetest fruit of your blessed vine. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that your church may always abide in you and you in it. Make it fruitful in words of faith and hope and deeds of love. Through its witness, 
graft many souls to you. Lord, in your mercy. Give to all your servants living on the margins the knowledge that through their faithful endurance they will bear rich fruit that refreshes and nourishes many hearts, perhaps even their enemies. Lord, in your mercy. You are the vine and we are the branches. Keep the people of this congregation united to you and to one another. Help our ministries bear much fruit in the lives of those around us. Give us joy in knowing and serving you, Lord, in your mercy. Prune the hearts of our earthly rulers. Cut away the greed, pride, and lust for power that leads to hatred and violence. Build up all that enriches the lives of the poor and humble. Let the desire to do your will abide in all our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy. You have overcome the world. Be the joy and strength of all those who defend us against violence, sickness, and injustice. Protect and guide them. Prosper all they do that works for peace and health. Surround them with your lo love. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to all who suffer a double portion of your spirit. We especially pray for those we name aloud or in the confines of our hearts. Fill them with your life. Keep them steadfast in faith. Bless and strengthen all who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, death shall never have the last word over those who abide in you. Thank you for speaking words of forgiveness and life to all who have died in you. Abide with us. Lead us to that place where we shall dwell with you and with all the redeemed and shall feast at your heavenly table forever. Lord, in your mercy. Grant to us all that in accordance with your will, dear Jesus, you accomplish your salvation among us. For you are risen from the dead and dwell with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. We give thanks for the gift of Easter that runs beyond our expectations beyond our categories of reason, even more beyond the sinking sense of our own lives. We know about the powers of death, powers that persist among us, powers that drive us from you and from our neighbor and from our best selves. We know about the power of fear and greed, anxiety and brutality and certitude, powers before which we are often helpless. And then you, you at dawn, unquenched, you in the darkness, you on Saturday, you who breaks the world to joy, yours is the kingdom, not the kingdom of death. Yours is the power, not the power of death. Yours is the glory, not the glory of death. Yours, you, we give thanks for the newness beyond our achieving. Amen. We remember the stories that Jesus' friends tell. Stories of bread broken and shared, feeding a multitude. Stories of being gathered together, enemy and friend around tables. Stories of unlikely guests revealing the face of the sacred. They say that it was on a night of both 
celebration and betrayal that Jesus took the bread left over on the table, blessed it and broke it, reminding them that it is in the breaking that we become whole, in losing our lives that we find them, in serving that we are served. As the grains scattered become one in the loaf, when we eat this bread, we become one with one another. They say that he took the cup also left over on the table, poured out and sharing, remembering with them the life-giving breath, even now pounding a rhythm through our veins. The breath of life from whence we come, the breath that precedes and follows all that we can see. As the grapes find life in the vine, when we drink this cup, we become at one with the source of life itself, freed, forgiven, fed. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Amen. We pray, our creative God who is here on earth, holy is your name, your kingdom come, a generous land flowing with milk and honey. May we do your will, standing up when all are sitting down and raising our voice when all are silent. You give us our daily bread in the song of the bird and the miracle of the corn. Forgive us for keeping silent in the face of injustice and for burying our dreams. Don't let us fall into the temptation of shutting the door through fear or resigning ourselves to hunger and violence of taking up the same arms of the enemy. But deliver us from evil. Give us the perseverance and the solidarity to look for love, even if the path has not yet been trodden, even if we fail. So we shall know your kingdom, which is being built forever and ever. Amen. We pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And receive this blessing. May our glorious God Grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia. The worship has ended. Let the service to one another begin. Go in peace. Share the good news. Amen. Oh, uh -huh.
Jesus. Jesus.